welcome back to Watchbox Studios. We are in Dubai for Dubai Watch Week 2021, and I am honored, excited, words that I can't even uh, say or think of right now, to be interviewing Mr. Jean-Marie Schaller, CEO and Creative Director of Louis Monet. Thank you so much for being here today with me. How are you doing? My pleasure, I'm equally honored. Yeah? I must say as well that I, I will give you the award of best dress of the show, and I think that is a, a highlight, especially when you have Waco and Nick folks walking around, but you, you win it every time I see you. Awesome, awesome. Ooh, thank you so much. <laughs> so, Louis Monet, a great brand. Um, it's not often that my clients introduce me to brands, but the first time that um, I saw one of your pieces, we had one on the website, and one of my client, clients called me in the middle of the night, I love this watch, I just need to have this watch. And that really got me going into this brand, and I kind of fell in love. I really uh, love the ambition behind this brand. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you know, what made you um, start this journey or continue the journey of Louis Monet? So yes, to tell you the story of Louis Monet, I'll tell you the true one, which is genuine. Uh, and Louis Monet was a watchmaker that lived from 1768 to 1853. And he was considered as one of the most important watchmakers. Mr. Broguet, for instance, when he introduced Mr. Moinet, he said, he's the best watchmaker in Paris after me. <laughs> Which is uh, amazing, right? It is amazing, yes. It's a big compliment, actually. And um, Louis Moinet was a genius and also a very humble man. Yes. So when he passed in 1853, he literally le left nothing behind him of his legacy. But I had this call of destiny, this little music in my head calling me to restart the company and promote his name again. And eventually I said, okay, this is, I have to do this, yes. you know, without really knowing why. And in 2000, I started a new Louis Monet company from scratch. And I was blind yeah. <laughs> because I had nothing. nothing. Nothing from his history. Thanks to the internet, we were very, very lucky to find some major elements, like he was the watchmaker to the kings, to the Tsar of Russia, to two American presidents, to Napoleon. I, I think it's so cool, and that's why I love so much about you and what you do, is you are, this is a journey of exploration and finding different artifacts about Mr. Monet's life and going into the history, because he was such a humble person, and. We forget about how many lives have been lived before us. And it, this brand is really you putting his life or his um, philosophy back together with a modern twist. And I really love your exploration and your deep dive. Because who knew? I mean, the first inventor of the chronograph, we hear so many chronograph stories. And when you hear Louis Monet, you're like, who, who is Louis Monet? But you actually did the research, and the Guinness World Records actually certified this as well. And you know, they, they kind of do their fact checking as well. What was the exact date of the, the chronograph? Invention? 1816. 1816, which is much, much before where we, you know, people believe that to be, which is uh, insane to me. I love that you are doing this, this call of destiny to find this history and bring it towards the world and onto the forefront. Yeah, this was an unbelievable experiment, you know, to, 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 I had been looking for this piece for five years without knowing it was a chronograph. I just knew it was the first high frequency timepiece. Mm -hmm with a beat of 216,000 vibration an hour. In early 1800s, which is yes. insane. <laughs> insane. And after five years, all of a sudden, it appeared at Christie's uh, in Geneva, at the auction. Oh, wow. Yes, and I was able to purchase it, and then we came back, and we analyzed it, and we said, hey, it's a chronograph. So we said, Shh. we're a small shop. You yes. Know? So we took nine months to analyze, disassemble, have historical proof and everything, and when we were ready, on the 21st of March 2013, we called for a press conference and we said, excuse us, in the name of Louis Monet, we have to rewrite the watch history. Wow, imagine that, rewriting watch history. When you started this journey, you couldn't think about it. In 2013, you really literally rewrite the books, and many books have been written about who came together for the first chronograph, so I love that. And who thought you didn't even know, it just popped up at auction one day, which is amazing. It was amazing. So, um, when was the first uh, the first pieces released of the brand in in uh, two thousand? No, we took we we had a few laboratory years. Yes. You know, trying to recap these historical elements that were missing. 
to organize with some very good friends the first designs and our very first production started in 2004, I believe. Okay. And, and with a chronograph. We, yeah, well, we, we have to. You by, know. by chance. <laughs> it, it, it was a call of destiny. So there's no chance here. It's all written. So you're just yeah. following a path you don't see, right? And we uncover the fog, as they say. So let's talk a little bit about the modern pieces that we have today. Really beautiful watches. Um, let's talk about maybe the, the memoirs. Absolutely. You know, for us as an independent boutique brand, it gave us a big strength to find this chronograph, like roots. Now, roots, they help you to build a tree yes. and to have nice fruits. And these are the fruits of the history of Louis Monet. Very nice fruits. You have here a special edition called Life uh, of six different colors, very vibrant. You know, we took uh, some time to find some very special colors and we associate them with a crocodile strap of a, an unusual finish as well. Yes. This is the Yucatan in green, limited to 12 watches. And this is the Alaska. Ah. For you for me, that right? lived in Alaska. <laughs> yes. The Alaska is also 12 watches, the vibrant blue. And it emphasizes the chronograph. We have this special construction. In the back, there is the traditional mechanical movement that is powering the hour and minute function. And here, with a mono pusher, you can activate the chronograph. And the chronograph function is built on top, so you have everything visible on your wrist. This is something we like very much, is to go beyond what is in existence and to bring a new emotion to our friends and customers. You, you know, it's interesting that you say emotion, because that's what these watches invoke to me. The first time I had one in my hand, first of all, the case construction is amazing. Nice, well done case, large, these are 44 millimeters, but the real estate is used so well, nice curve on it is, um, to the watch. And then you have that full chronograph that lets you see everything that's going on full action in a beautiful balance. The colors, I, I love the Alaska. <laughs> the colors are, are really nice as well, but it, it's a watch nobody else has on the wrist. It's a watch that stands out in the room of many, many pairs. It really stands out, and it's something that you don't, you don't forget. I remember selling that watch, and I just had to dig a little bit deeper, you know, and I was fortunate to meet you many times, and so many more watches. Um, you guys have created some very, very special pieces. And every time I have, a, I have a new favorite, like, like what happened today. How do you start? What, how, how, do you, uh, how do you pick what to make next? I think it's a mix of being faithful to the roots, faithful to Louis Moinet, and at the same time to be open to the world. Yes. And we have two kind of products. We have mechanical wonders, such as this one, mechanical part first. If you want to read the time, it is here. Yeah. But what we suggest is a chronograph before anything else. And it's vibrant and alive on your wrist. Yes. And the second product category is cosmic art. We have an incredible collection of now more than 30 different meteorites from Mars, from the moon, but also many different other meteorites that tell so many interesting stories. We have one that existed before the Earth itself. It's crazy. <laughs> yes. Another one containing amino acids, the blocks of life. So it's unending. We have now flown material, such as a little piece from Apollo 11, for instance, that went to the moon and came back. That is now part of a creation. Yes. And these are our two areas of activities. But as I said now, I don't want to exclude new ideas, cooperation with some crazy people to bring new emotion to this watch world that in my opinion is sometimes a bit too traditional. Yes, I agree. I think, you know, it, it can be a very black and white world and, you know, everybody wants to follow success. So we have so many sports model with a blue dial and now green dial is a new thing and everything, you know, is on an integrated bracelet and which is nice, but I, I like something new. I like something fresh and I feel What's so nice about, I, I call it the independent tidal wave that's going on in the watch world right now, is people want something that speaks out and grabs them. You know, when you walk and see uh, Lumina in a showcase, it speaks out, it grabs you. 
you have to speak to it for a little bit. You have to interact there. It's not a watch that you walk and then somebody tells you, hey, you should check out this watch. It's a watch that immediately, you know, it's a lady in a red dress, right? You just want to say hello, how are you doing? <laughs> it, 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 that, that is what Louis Minet is to me. And when you talk about cosmic art, the pieces that you made, the detail, the different materials and meteorite is amazing. We talk about the, the Mission to the Moon series that you did. The detail in these, the, these watches are amazing. We could spend two hours just talking about that. Most brands wouldn't even dare to do something like that. It's too ambitious. You know, maybe a watch designer will make it up and they say, you know, keep dreaming. Something like this, we wouldn't actually produce and direct capital to make amazing stuff like this. But you, you know, you actually do it. You actually put your money where your mouth is. And I think that's why you're finding such great success right now. I personally have fallen in love uh, in um, uh, the space revolution, which is uh, probably one of the, uh, the most amazing watches that I've had on the wrist ever. I'll go out and say it. And I, you know, I, I've uh, held and played with many, many watches, but it's so mesmerizing, two turbines beating at different rates, going against each other. And on the space revolution, you have the titanium spacecraft as well. And it is a watch, there's no reason for this watch to exist, but there's every reason for it to exist right, at the same time. And when you go down to the detail, and what I love, you take a piece like this, full sapphire case, you look from it from every angle, and it gives you everything. If you want the mechanical art to go here, if you just want a mesmerization, you could just stare at this for hours. And I, it's really, what made you come up with um, the Space Revolution and uh, the Satellite Turbion series? Let's go there. Uh, the Space Revolution is emblematic of this cosmic art. It's a technology that is, by chance, is a watch. I'm reusing the same concept like you, but yeah. with different words. Yeah. But at the end, it finishes like something that you would not have thought of. Something new on your wrist. Something totally different from everything that exists. And by chance, it tells you the time. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's amazing. And where, where's the annual production right now for the brand? Uh, today, our annual production is 500 pieces. Yes, very low. Yes, we just, I must tell you, we probably will increase this okay. production because it's not enough. We have had uh, many requests this year uh, and we will grow up. But to, certain, to a certain extent, we want to keep the same quality, of course. We don't, don't want to overproduce and we want to make everybody happy. You, you know, I love something you said earlier. You really want to avoid it as much as possible having, you know, a huge wait list for your pieces. You mm -hmm. want people to actually be able to buy them and as much as you can, right? You can't go to 10,000 pieces or something like that. But as much as you can, you want people to be able to see a watch, purchase a watch and go home with something. And I really like that you're really positioned on getting the watches on the wrist. And, you know, of course, you know, there'll, there'll be hype and certain pieces will go crazy, but you want the consumer you know, to live with the watch. You want to get the watches out there, and I, I really, really love that about you. Absolutely. There are, in life, there are rare things, but if you have to put yourself on a waiting list for three years, honestly, where is the fun? Yeah, that's true. You have to have fun, right? What's the point of the whole collecting if there's not a little bit of fun? Uh, so what, what would you say is your biggest challenge right now? The, the world has changed mm -hmm. since 2000 when the dream has started. I'm sure you're, you're, you're seeing demand increase year over year, especially with this, again, this independent wave that's going on and pieces like yours just capturing attention. What's your biggest challenge as you see today? As an independent, when you start, nobody helps you. I started alone in my, in my house and uh, I went to the bank, uh, but they didn't give me one penny. I went to um, see some investors, they wanted the majority, so I said no thank you because I wanted to Control, keep yes. the steering wheel. And at that time I would have answered to you to avoid mistake that will kill me. Yes. And today I feel more relaxed because now we have reached a certain, you know after 20 years or 15 years of activity, we know what works, what doesn't work, we have kind of a routine, if I may exactly. say. And to, we, have, we are very lucky because I think also for an independent to position itself the right way is very challenging. You know, if you don't position your brand right, what is, what is good for this brand? Yellow dial, red dial, everything is, is okay. 
for us, we have had this chance to find this chronograph and it has given us a, the roots. A, an anchor, yes. a ro the roots, okay. absolutely. So a chronograph is very important, it is directing our activities. I still have not answered your question. Yeah, I know it's a tough question. <laughs> I think to keep the good work for the long term, I think, you know, time goes fast. Yes. And you have to think that Louis Moinet, he disappeared. I don't want to him to disappear a second time. No. So I have to make sure that step by step we go in the right direction for the long term. Yes, exactly. Is it a good answer? No, that's a very good answer. Because you know, <laughs> when you answer a call of destiny, like you have, that is your challenge, right? To make sure that it, this isn't something that goes away. You know, when you decide, I, I think you always create these watches, but you want something that will speak, you know, 200 years ago in front of us. Just like somebody, you discovered that chronograph that was made so long ago for people to discover these watches and the amazing pieces you produce in the near future. And hopefully uh, I'll get a space revolution on my wrist. Um, you want this to keep going. You want the, um, the name, the tradition, the philosophy to keep going. And you want to be, uh, you know, just uh, a real beacon out there to have ambition, to create, to don't be afraid. You know, I think right now what we have is the world has opened up so much in the watch collecting world where you don't have to be afraid if you're a watchmaker. You can take a chance. You know, you can jump off the cliff and there's a collector out there who will catch you and embrace you. Because if you come from a place of true passion, of true respect for what horology is, true respect of quality and use and function and a direction, I think there are collectors who really appreciate that and that's why the brand is doing so good and I, I know we'll definitely do good in the future as well. Um, be, before we wrap up, I, I just want to touch on, so most of your watches are 44 or so, but I've heard that you have some smaller pieces coming out that might be of interest to, um, mm. let's say, the Tim size wrist folks out there. You have connections. Uh, a little bit, a little bit, I try. <laughs> yes, you're right. We are working on a 40 millimeter case Actually, the first came just last week and from production. Yes. Yes, because, you know, it's always different if it's a prototype or production. Just this sapphire, as we discussed earlier with our friend Sean, is, uh, you know, this is sapphire. It's quality. If it's plastic, tock, 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 yeah. it doesn't make it. So, anyway, we have the first cases now. They have arrived. We will, uh, we will have also a rubber strap. Ooh. Yes, and we have been working for a long time on this rubber strap. I hope to apply for a patent. I hope to receive a patent. Oh, I'm excited we, to see it. It's a special construction. Ooh. And uh, we, we, we want to do a piece that has for the memories and also for the tempograph, the same mechanism in a modern contemporary expression within a 40 millimeter case in titanium and in gold. Oh, I'm very excited to see that. So before we go, in just a few words, somebody has never seen or had a chance to hold a Lumine or be captured by its beauty. Tell them why they should go and get a Lumine on their wrist. To have a piece of history. I think it's important, you know. It's not simply, what is a Swiss watch? It's not because it, is, says, it says Swiss on the dial that it is good enough. I think if they want a piece of art, something modern that is linked to history, I think we are a good address, not the only one, of course, but uh, it's special, it's unique, and um, it's a matter of taste, but uh, I think these are the main reasons. Yeah, I agree. They're, they're very special watches, and uh, I'll be bugging you as much as possible because I, I need a space revolution in my life. <laughs> now my, my heart has, has, has flown, and uh, one day I'll, I'll meet in Switzerland. Mr. Schaller, such an honor to interview. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you so much. Right.